begin a new session today on supportive pedagogy, I want you all to remember Kolb's experiential learning cycle. Let me just uh, put that on the screen in case you haven't seen it lately. Okay, uh, this is from the 80s. Uh, you can apply this to your own learning experiences as well as your students to uh, experience or experiment with something, ref um, collect the data and reflect, conceptualize, and then again, experiment. So I want you to keep this in mind uh, in this session and all th over all three sessions. Today, Shannon and Tom are going to lead us through some approaches that will keep us focused on interaction and interactive learning. If true, if true knowledge, second, if true knowledge comes from experience, we can be sure to trust the competence, extensive skills, and attention to detail of Shannon Smith. I've worked with her. Now, she is an English language fellow at Maristela in Vijuaga, and she always aims to improve her students' holistic proficiency and inculcate her activities into teachers' methods and approaches. And behind and beside every strong educator or most strong educators, at least the ones that you're meeting on these three days, are behind us supportive husbands. Not only does she have that encouragement from her husband, but they also share the passion for training and teaching. Thomas Kral is an education consultant, as well as currently a PhD researcher. And his work is varied, but always includes interactive teaching and learning. We're honored to have this couple with us and for us to witness true collaboration. We often wonder, how can we collaborate? Now we're going to see it in action for this crucial element of teaching. I want to welcome Shannon and Tom to our screen, to our community, <laughs> and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Vicki, for that great warm, warm welcome indeed. And um, kind, kind words. I, I just want to say, um, yes, Tom, I, I'm, I'm really relying on him at this point because um, actually a lot of, of what we're doing tonight is um, in part um, his experience in, in doing online webinars. Um, so I have to have to say and give him credit for a lot this evening. Um, and yeah, he is every bit in, in his own right a teacher. <laughs> and uh, really, really, we're happy, happy to be here tonight to, to work with, with all of you and, and share what we've collaborated with in the last few days to get ready for this event. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the, the amazing welcome from, from everybody. And it's great to see so many um, so many people joining us today. It's really a pleasure for, for me to be here and um, to, to kind of speak to all of you guys. Um, I'm going to share my screen now so we can begin. So please be patient with me um, as I try to do this the right way. Okay, can everybody see? Yes. My screen, good, okay. on slideshow mode. Okay, so is everyone ready? Can everyone see and hear? Yes? Yes. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome everybody to, um, to uh, day two of our, of our um, webinar on interactive teaching. Um, and we're, we're basically going to pick up exactly where Mina left off yesterday, and we're going to get into more um, um, kind of specifics and more uh, kind of kind of practical um, ideas on how some of that kind of interactivity, which Mina talked about yesterday, 
can be applied in your lecture hall, in your classroom. Um, you know, we tried to make this um, webinar as uh, wide ranging as possible. Yeah, we have a large group of uh, participants who are from very different disciplines. Um, some of you teach um, English literature, some of you teach chemistry, some of you teach social sciences, so there's a huge, and some of you are counselors, as I learned yesterday, and um, some of you are students, so um, there is uh, a huge amount of experience and a variety of participants, um, so we, we are coming um, at it from the point of view of, of um, in, the English department, because that's the contact Shannon has um, in her college. Uh, but we've tried to also make it relevant for, for others as well. So um, anyways, thank you for, for joining. And I'm going to run down um, today's, uh, the, the, basically the main points of what we're going to cover today, the topics and tomorrow. Um, and tomorrow. So the, basically what we're going to do, so before before we, we start, um, so we're, we'll see where we go today. We've um, planned this for um, today and tomorrow. And we'll see how much we get through today and we'll continue where we left off tomorrow. And um, we're trying to make this because it is an interactive um, <laughs> webinar about interactivity. We're trying to make it interactive. So please feel free to use the chat room. I have to turn on the, um, I can't see the chat room from, um, since I'm in slideshow mode, so. I can see it, so I'll, I'll watch it for you. Okay, great, good, good, okay. Um, so please feel free to interact um, on the in the chat room. I might turn off. I might stop sharing just to to see what's going on in the chat room. If that if that's um, kind of a, a sensible thing to do. But anyways, let me run down the the topics for the next two days. Um, so. As Vicky said um, in her introduction, we're talking a lot about English medium education and that's a real challenge for many of the students at the um, at our colleges here in Andhra Pradesh and um, so we're going to talk a little bit about student challenges with English medium education. Um, this will be a segue into interactive lectures actually what you know, the, the, what happens in the lecture hall itself and how that can be some ideas on making that more interactive and that's going to take quite a lot of time that's that's going to be the largest section um, and then we're going to move on to using visuals <coughs> visual aids and, and organizers um, and get into pair work and group work and how that can be um, included into um, kind of lectures and we'll already have started that in the interactive lecture so they all kind of meld together anyway um, and then we're going to pick up something that Mina mentioned yesterday a little bit about critical thinking skills Bloom's taxonomy um, and how we can work with that framework to uh, inform kind of lectures and ta lectures and tasks in your in your training and classrooms. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just jump jumped ahead of myself there. Okay, so that's that's sort of a very rough plan for the next couple of um, days. So 